were discussing the applications of closed loop operational amplifiers. We have already discussed the application of closed loop operational amplifier as a summing amplifier as well as for subtraction. Moving on to the third application of the closed loop operation amplifier, we are now going to discuss the op amp performing the mathematical operation of differentiation. Now, if we look carefully at the circuit, we again find that the differentiator is configured with the op amp as follows and that is shown in the figure. We find that the feedback is negative and that the feedback is through the resistance. We also find that there is a capacitor at the input. So, the moment we have a capacitor at the input, we know that this configuration of op amp is meant to process AC signals only. We know that DC signals having 0 hertz frequency would offer infinite impedance at the capacitor and therefore, the capacitor would not allow the DC to pass through it. It would only allow the AC frequencies to pass through it and therefore, this differentiator is going to process the AC signals only. Now, what we see here is that, that the non-inverting terminal of the op amp is grounded via again the resistance. So, this resistance that we have at the ground is utilized to reduce the bias current problems. So, we look at node A again. It is essentially at ground potential since we have already discussed and understood it from the concept of virtual ground. In order to see what is the magnitude of current flowing through the capacitor, we look at the circuit again. We know that Q is equal to C V from our basic sciences course. So, differentiating on both sides, we find that d q by d t is d c v by d t. Since capacitor value is constant, hence d c v by d t would be 0 and we would only be left with c d v by d t. Looking at the left side, left hand side, what is d q by d t? d q by d t is the rate of flow of charge and that is the current. The basic definition of current is the flow of charges. So, rate of flow of charges d q by d t constitutes current and we get I as equal to C 1 d V 1 minus V A by d t. Since V A in this case is at ground potential and therefore, the value of V A is 0 and therefore, we get I C is equal to C 1 d V 1 by d t. So, current flowing through the feedback register also can be seen as I f is equal to V naught by R f. So, moving on, we know that the current I c and current I f would be equal to one another. That is because it is from Kirchhoff's current law, whatever current is entering a node, it is the same current that is coming out of the node. So, looking again at the circuit, we can see that I c is coming from V 1 and entering node A, whereas the current I f is coming from output part of the circuit flowing through R f and entering node A. 
So, direction of both the currents is actually opposite to one another. So, IC should be equal to minus IF and so taking IF on the left hand side of the equation we get that IC plus IF should come out to be equal to 0. Substituting back the values for IC and IF we get C1 dV1 by dt plus V0 by RF as equal to 0. So, if we look at the signs, the negative sign implies as far as IC and IF are concerned, the negative sign implies that the output current is 180 degree out of phase compared to the input current. So, therefore, we are able to write V0 as equal to minus RF into dV1 divided by Vc1 into dt or rather Xc1, where Xc1 is the input impedance offered by the capacitor. So, input impedance or reactance of the capacitor as we can see directly is a function of the frequency of the input signal. We again remind ourselves that we are processing only AC signals in this case. So, there is a problem associated with this differentiator because in practical differentiator the output waveforms are not produced because of frequency problems. It is easy to see that the gain of the circuit will increase with increase in frequency. That is because the gain of the circuit is inversely proportional to the reactance offered by the capacitor that is Xc1. Since if we go back a couple of slides, we see that the differentiator is configured in inverting fashion. This is an inverted op amp that is configured as a differentiator. Hence, the impedance offered will be or the gain of, of the op amp should be equal to minus of RF by Xc1 which is the reactance offered by the capacitor. So, moving on we can see that gain of the circuit is minus of Rf by Xc1. Now, Xc1 is 2 pi times C, 2 pi f C1. So, it moves to the numerator. So, gain of the circuit becomes a directly influenced by the value of f being associated with the circuit and f where f being the frequency of the input signal. More the frequency, higher the frequency, more the gain of the circuit. So, this makes the circuit a bit unstable. Therefore, we need to make certain changes or additions to the circuit in order to get a stable performance from this circuit. We also understand that Xc1 would decrease with increase in frequency and that makes the circuit susceptible to high frequency noise where the capacitor would tend to act as a short circuit. When the high frequency noise is amplified by the op amp, then sometimes this noise can completely overshadow the differentiated output signal that is of utility to us. So, the frequency as defined for a zero gain for which the gain is 0 dB is defined as F naught is equal to 1 by 2 pi Rf C1. So, stability and high frequency noise 
problems can be corrected by the addition of two components wherein one of the components is a resistance R1 and the other is the feedback capacitor and the same are shown in this circuit. Now, what we see here is that we have connected a resistance R1 in series with the input capacitance C1. Also, we have connected capacitor CF in parallel to the feedback resistance RF. Immediately looking at the circuit, one can understand that at high frequencies, at high frequencies, the feedback capacitor would act as a short circuit for the signals. That is because the reactance offered by a capacitor is 1 by omega c, where omega is 2 pi f. Hence, higher the frequency, lower the reactance offered by the capacitor. So, high frequency problems are readily solved by looking at this circuit, wherein CF contributes for, you know, to compensate the problems of high frequency. So, the practical differentiator circuit solves the twin problems of stability and high frequency noise. The gain limiting frequency in this case would be F B would be equal to 1 by 2 pi R 1 C 1. In this case, one equation needs to be satisfied such that the stability of the circuit is maintained over the bandwidth of frequencies under consideration. Herein, the equation R1 C1 equal to RF CF should be satisfied. Thus, R1 C1 and RF CF help to reduce significantly the effect of high frequency input, the problem of amplifier noise and its ill effects. It also makes the circuit more stable by preventing the increase in gain with frequency. Generally, the value of F0 should be such and rather in turn it affects the value of R1 C12. It should be selected in such a way that Fb should be greater than Fa which should be and less than Fc. So, wherein the values of Fa, Fb and Fc are shown as follows. Since the manufacturer provides the value of unity gain bandwidth of op amp in open loop configuration, hence calculation of these values is actually trivial. So, as long as the time period of the input signal is larger than or equal to RF C1 till the time the input signal would be differentiated in a very stable manner. So, for R1, RF C1 to be greater than R1 C1 or RF CF, the expression for output voltage remains the same as in the case of the ideal differentiator. Also, the compensation resistance is converted to compensate for the input bias current and as we can see in the diagram in the couple of slides back is that R com is connected to the non-inverting terminal of the op amp. So, what we find if we look at the outputs of stable differentiated waveforms, we find that for a sinusoidal output, we get a co-sinusoidal output from the differentiator op amp and for a square wave, 
we get to see the spikes that is but natural because the square wave input has a very fast rise time and a very fast fall time that is a very fast manner in which it goes from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. But the time over which the signal is stable that is either 0 or 1 therein the output of the differentiator is actually 0. It is but natural because since this is a constant quantity, so differentiating a constant gives us 0. In terms of the components being utilized, we can see that in the differentiator, we have the input through a capacitance. So, giving a DC, a stable value means a DC, that signal is totally blocked by the capacitor because for an input of 0 hertz, the impedance or reactance offered by the capacitor is infinite. So, now we have seen the third application of closed loop or PAMP being utilized as a differentiator. We have seen the ideal differentiator and also we have seen the practical differentiator. So, moving on to the fourth application wherein the closed loop or PAMP is configured as an integrator. The circuit that is shown in the figure is that of an ideal integrator. It is again important to note that it is configured, the op amp is configured in a negative feedback and only in this case the difference is that while in differentiator the feedback was through a resistance, in this case the feedback is through a capacitor. At the input voltage, that is the voltage that needs to be integrated is again fed to terminal 2 or the inverting terminal of the op amp through a resistance R1. The non-inverting terminal, terminal 3 A of the op amp is again grounded through a compensation resistance. Needless to say, the function of the compensation compensatory resistance is to reduce the input bias current. So, again what we can see here is that the input nodal equation at node A is again the current entering the node A and leaving the node A. So, in this case the current entering the node A is V i by R 1 and the current leaving the node A or rather entering node A in a different direction is C f d v naught by d t. Again where did this term C f d v naught by d t arise from? It arises from the current, the current flowing through the capacitance C f is the rate of flow of charge through the capacitance. So, herein we have Q as equal to C V and when we differentiate that d q by d t, we get d c f by d t and d v naught by d t keeping first v constant, v naught constant and in the second case c f constant. So, what we see that since the value of c f is a constant for the experiment, hence d c f by d t is actually 0 and we are left with only one expression and that is C f d v naught by d t. This term has a negative sign that is because its direction, this current direction uh, I 1 has a different direction than I f. So, I 1 is equal to minus I f. So, bringing I f on to the left hand side, we get I 1 plus I f as equal to 0. That is why 
the expression v1 by r1 plus cf dv0 by dt is equal to 0. So, arranging the terms we see dv0 by dt is equal to minus 1 by r1 cf v1. Now, this is a differentiated expression. We will integrate both the sides. So, integrating both the sides for a time 0 to t, we have dv0 integral from 0 to t as equal to minus 1 by r1 cf, which is a constant value and 0 to t integral of vi dt. Since the output voltage at time t is equal to 0, initially the capacitor is not charged and hence the amount of charge on it is equal to 0. So, doing appropriate mathematics, we find that V0 at a time t is equal to minus 1 by R1 CF integral 0 to t Vi dt plus V0 at time t equal to 0. Since the value, if you look at this expression, V0 at time t equal to 0 is 0 since capacitor is uncharged. So, therefore, we keep this as 0 and we get V0 at time t is equal to minus 1 by R1 Cf integral 0 to t of Vi dt. Since R1 Cf is a time constant for the integrator and it has a constant value. So, therefore, the value is taken out of the integral sign. So, we consider R1 Cf is equal to 1 and V0 at time t equal to 0. So, substituting back, we get V0 as equal to minus 0 to 1 of Vi dt. So, a simple low pass RC circuit can also work as an integrator when time constant is very large. So, this implies that very large values of resistances and capacitance need to be used. So, R and C values cannot be made infinitely large because of practical problems. Let us say we are using value of R in mega ohms. Then already a very low amount of current passes through the op amp and reducing it further in terms of lower values of micro amps or even going into nano amps reduces its function. Even the value of C cannot be made infinitely large, then it adds bulk to the circuit besides very high voltages would be involved. So, hence uh, decent medi uh, medium values of R and C need to be utilized. So, the output when we have a square wave input looks somewhat like this. Two things are very important. If we look at this diagram, number one, that the input and output are out of phase. For a square wave input, we get a triangular output. That is because in this case, it is important to note that what is the input or what does the input look like. As we can see, again the square wave has a very fast rise time and a very fast fall time. So, that means it rises from 0 to 1 in a very fast manner and it also falls from 1 to 0 high to low value in a very rapid fashion. So, at that point of time, the capacitor would not be able to store charges. So, till the time the input that is the square wave has a stable high input at that point of time, the job of the capacitor is to keep storing charges and hence the output across the capacitor would look like a triangular wave. Since this is not entirely triangular, but rather it is exponential. But if we take small number of terms and the capacitance value is small, 
then the rise is almost linear. Hence, what we find that in the case of an integrator, an ideal integrator for a square wave input, we would get a triangular output. So, we stop here. As far as applications are concerned, more applications would be there for this closed loop op-amp in next edition of this lectures. Thank you very much.